So draws open. It opened March 1st, so it's open at this point. It closes April 5th at 8 p.m. Mountain. If you're late, you're screwed. So don't be late. April 5th at 8 p.m. Mountain. Set your calendar for April 4th. That way you actually get it done. Um, so just a heads up on that. We'll start there. Oh, you got her, dude. She's down. Let's go. Dude, I just shot a deer of a lifetime. Freaking smoke team. One with nature, and if you're a believer, one with God. Definitely gets your heart pumping. Boy, you are in trouble. Oh, Obsession Podcast. All right, guys, welcome back to another Fall Obsession Podcast episode. Fall Obsession Podcast is driven by our friends at Ridge Rock Hunt Company, and we'll give them a proper shout out in the sponsor segment at the end of the episode. I'm Sam Thrash, your Fall Obsession Podcast host. Thank you for joining me this week. Back on here with a couple of our uh, Fall Obsession staff members. We got our media production manager, Nick Powell, back with me. What's up, Nick? Hey, what's up, Sam? We also got our pro staffer and our Western Regional Coordinator, Tim Burgess, with us. What's up, Tim? Hey, how you guys doing? Doing good, man. So this this podcast is going to be, it's one of our more educational topics and I, I didn't get a chance to even look back and remember the episode but we kind of did something similar to this last year Tim you and I talking about some key draw dates and and information that you guys need to know if you're looking at going out west I know exclusively Colorado Tim that's where you're from and where your area of expertise is and all that kind of stuff so this episode is might be kind of information overload but if you are looking at a, a hunt out west a hunt in Colorado over-the-counter elk what you know all that stuff in that area this is an episode to listen to this is an episode to take notes on I know I'll be taking some notes myself Um, I'm by no means an expert Tim's the expert that's why he's with us here today Um, if you're watching the podcast video for this episode you'll see that Nick is already in the right state of mind with the with the the mountainous background back there so uh, we're all we're all sitting here a little jealous of Nick who's apparently already gone up there ready to hunt so it's not even as cold as i would have thought yeah it's it's freaking march man what are you doing up there (laughs) well it is like 55 up here today so yeah it's not cold at all perfect so yeah yesterday was in the mid 60s so yeah you could have t-shirt and short it like i did that's what i'm talking about there you go all right so we're gonna dive in and get into all this tim you're the one that's you've prepared and done a lot of research uh for this podcast episode and everything really appreciate that first off but man i'm gonna kind of turn it over to you and let you kind of steer this conversation and and talk to us a little bit about what what do we need to know this year for uh for coming out there and hunting and let's let's hit it let's go at it sounds good so yeah we'll kind of start out first with like the dates because that's always the thing and we'll hit it at the end again because it's obviously what matters so draws open it opened march 1st so it's open at this point it closes april 5th at 8 p.m mountain if you're late you're screwed so don't be late april 5th at 8 p.m mountain set your calendar for april 4th that way you actually get it done um so just a heads up on that we'll start there um kind of how it works and this is a question that a lot of people always ask is what do i have to do to actually put in for the draw and so there's a couple things you can do to buy what they call the qualifying license. And so I'm going to cover that to start with, and we'll kind of get into it from there. So qualifying license is either the annual small game or annual or a spring turkey tag. So um, for most people, they buy the small game because it's cheaper. Even for residents, it's cheaper. So most people, unless they're already going turkey hunting, will probably buy the small game. Um and then you can use it to hunt, you know, pheasants and whatever else. So when you guys buy it and come up and hunt with me, you can come hunt pheasants too, whenever you slackers get on that. So <laughs> we'll get that figured out one of these days. But uh, so that's the big thing is you go, when you go into your, do your cart um, and uh, we'll make another video where we show how to actually do this on the website, but you'll make your cart. The first thing you have to add is that either spring turkey tag, which it still hasn't become spring season yet, so you could buy that. Um, but like I said, it's more expensive for non-residents. One hundred and sixty dollars and sixty-seven cents for a spring turkey tag. So that's a that's an expensive little uh, Thanksgiving dinner. But if you're going to come up and hunt it, you might as well do it. 
whereas the um, annual small game non-resident is $86.50. So still pretty hefty, but not, not as bad, you know, half as much. And the other thing you have to put in your cart and have to buy is a habitat stamp. So these are, you have to buy one every year unless you buy the, the uh, forever one, which the forever one's like just over 300 bucks right now. I screwed up and didn't buy it when it was 300 a few years ago. Um, and I should have, cause every year it's $10 and change. It goes up every year cause of the way Cardo does their tag system is basically the cost of living index increases the price of the tags and application fees and everything at that rate. So like on that, it's like, it's 10 59 now. So I think it's its third or fourth year of increase. It's not a ton of money, but I could have, you know, paid it off in 29 years at this point, if I had bought it back when it was 300 bucks instead of 30. So kind of kicking myself but it's too late now and i'll probably just keep buying them yearly because that's the way it works it's a lot cheaper a lot easier on the wallet <laughs> um so you do those two things you put them in your cart and then you'll go onto the website and you'll select and you'll go search for the species you want and if you haven't made an account with Cardo parks and wildlife it's pretty easy they'll give you a cid number and it'll show up on your license um and that's how you'll know like your information so really the other key is if you have one, save your license for next year because you're going to need that number every single year. So I just keep mine in a stack literally on the shelf as you saw, I just pulled off from next to me. Um, so when I need it, I just know where it is and you grab it from last year's and all the previous ones. And it makes it a reminder of like, hey, what did I actually draw last year? Um, and you have it right there and you can look at it and be like, was that actually worth it or not? And so that's, a, that's the thing that I do that I think really helps. But so after you put in and then you select what animals, like you go in and you'll select your animal, and then you'll put in your hunt code. And this is the part that I think everybody gets really confused on what do all these numbers and letters and all that junk mean. And so the first letter is uh, the letter of the animal. So it's a D for deer, E for elk, A for antelope, um, B for bear, T for turkey, um, and I forget, I think mountain goats, M. Uh, bighorn is uh, R, I believe, and I believe moose is M as well. Uh, but that part will automatically pre-fill for you once you put in for it. Like once you choose the animal, the first letter, the first letter will fill. The next letter is either a D, is either an M, an F, or an E. And so this tells you M for male, F for female, or E for either sex. And so we really want to be careful when you're looking through the book um, to find your codes. And to give you an idea, this is the book that you want to have. And the hunt codes are in the back, starting on page, what page is it this year? Uh, 22. And there are pages and pages and pages of codes. Uh, and this is just for the deer, elk, antelope, moose and bear codes and there are 65 uh, pages of codes and every single one's pretty much full top of the bottom it's there's quite a bit so you really want to be careful on making sure you put in your code correctly because like i said the the m e or f depend, determines either sex male female the next thing will be three letter three numbers those three numbers tell you what unit or units that tag is good for. Um, so, for example, one, I'll just pull an easy one to find that'll make sense. Uh, elk tag, I did, well, we'll do the deer tag I put in for because elk tag is not going to make any sense to most people. Um, so, the deer tag I put in for is um, DM093. So, it tells you it's unit 93, which is way northeast Colorado. In the book, in the brochure, it'll have a picture with all of the units laid out. Uh, let's find one that's not super chewed up, and I can show you. Looks like this, but you'll definitely want to look at it carefully and make sure you know the area you're talking about. And then double check with Onyx that that is the area you actually want to put in for. Make sure there's actually public land there if you're looking at that. Or if there's private land, make sure with whoever you're hunting that that's actually the correct area. Sometimes their ranch will be in multiple units, and they'll want you to put in for a different one, you know, based on, hey, part of it's in this unit, part of it's in this unit, but this is where we see the animals. So keep that in mind. So like I said, it's DM093, and then 01 tells it's the first season, first season. 
and then R, which tells us the rifle season. So every want every unit will have a zero one, zero two, zero three. Some will just have uh, zero one and then L one. It just kind of depends. That's the season number. And then the last, like I said, the last code is R for rifle, M for muzzle loader, or um, X for season's choice, which I'll cover what season's choice is in a second, or A for archery. So you really want to make sure that you get every single piece correctly because if you draw the wrong tag, um, you're kind of stuck with it. The rules changed a little bit this year where if you do draw the wrong tag, which the draw happens in the first week of June, you can turn it back in within three days of the last draw. So I believe it's June 6th is the last day of the draw. And then you can turn it back in by June 9th and not have to lose your points or pay for that tag. That's new this year. Wasn't that way before. It used to be if you get the wrong one, you either have to pay for it to return it and get your points back, um, which is obviously what you do as a non-resident because you're paying a lot of money. Um, or, I mean, if you had a ton of points, you might not. You might eat the six or 700 bucks. But um, otherwise, you're... Um, but this year you can turn it in and get your points back in stuff. So make sure when you do have it come back in June, double check everything right away and make sure it's all right. And if not, get on returning it right away and get it taken care of. But the X, which is kind of rare, is for season's choice. What that means is that tag can be used during an archery season, a muzzle loader season, and a rifle season until you fill the tag. So like the whitetail tag I had last year was a season's choice. So the season was... October 28th, or excuse me, October 1st to October 28th for archery, then October 29th to November 8th for rifle. During that archery season, there was an October 8th to 16th muzzleloader season, and then November 9th to November 30th was another archery season, and then December 1st to December 14th was a rifle season, and December 15th to December 31st was another archery season. So you get a ton of of time to fill your tag <laughs> they really want you to kill something is what these come down to um and that's great because they're mainly planes and planes white tail tags so you get a really high success success chance um if you do draw a season's choice deer tag but you got to be at a point most of the places do not have any public land so really keep that in mind and only put in if you have land access because otherwise you're not going to have a whole lot of success when you're begging pleading and prodding to try to get on somewhere you know, after three months of no luck, two months of no luck. So uh, keep that in mind with if they do have a really long season, it's probably either no public land or a really high abundance of animals, um, but they're all in places you can't really get to. So that's one thing to keep in mind there. It's a lot different okay. than Texas, Nick. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> is the, uh, the any season tag, Tim, is that um, something that – is drawn randomly or is that something that we like as a non-resident or resident you can put in for is that a resident only so those the season's choice <clears throat> are anybody can put in for them for deer there are a couple for moose that i believe are resident only and they take a ton of preference points anyway so it's not something you're going to do this year gotcha. um but uh yeah those are anybody in like the the one by me so it's good for unit 93 97 98 99 and 100 well, basically what that is to give you a visual picture is Brighton is the first town like northeast of Denver on Highway 76. So we're talking like just north of the airport, a DIA airport here. Everything south of 76 from there to the state line within like 30 miles of the of the highway is in this this area. It's like 150 miles long by 30 miles wide area that's covered by this tag. So it's, it's a ridiculously huge area. But again, there's like almost no public land in it. Um, there's a few, one or two larger areas sort of in some of the other units, but not much. Um, so definitely make sure like with these tags, like if you get one of those, make sure you're in an area that actually has some ground you can actually hunt or make sure you have permission ahead of time. Because even with that long of a season, if you're, you know, if you're public land in like in 93, there's, I think 207 acres and they're all in one spot um, and it's extremely highly hunted um, and it's basically a bunch of trees around a, a field that they plow and every winter they plow it over so it's basically dirt so you're looking at like a single set of trees around a dirt patch and hoping that something is in there 
and there's always dudes there. I drive by it all the time, and there's always like three or four dudes there hanging out. Um, it's, wow. it's right by my uncle. It's about a mile from my uncle's house, and it's like – so we drive by there a lot, and it's like there's three dudes hanging out in the, like one corner and two dudes in the other corner, and there's never anyone that walks through there. So mm. keep that in mind if you are – um, looking at a spot like if there's puddle clean and it's small there's probably a reason that it's that's there's a lot of tags in that area yeah so um so that's kind of like the way the the deer deer you have to put in and draw you, no matter what kind of deer you want um i guess there is one caveat that there's a late season rifle um over the counter either sex whitetail tag in a bunch of areas that have almost no whitetail deer and no and they have zero public land so it's like basically it's carter springs south to the border the longest long 25 but there's really like almost no public land in any of those units and um the one unit that does have a piece of big piece of public land you can't hunt that big piece of public land that's excluded from the tag so it's like the one there's one like large wildlife area that's a couple thousand acres and that's like that piece is excluded so have fun hunting around that <laughs> so, of course of course yeah. so it's like for, for, um i want to say that uh field brendan scott field staffer or pro staffer hunted one of those units that this tag's good for with got his elk there so it's like it's a great unit for other stuff but it's you know it's like the edge of the mountains basically where on the very eastern edge in the rivers there's deer whitetails but not many so hmm. keep that in mind if there, if there is a like this one random over-the-counter opportunity you better know somebody that's got some ground um to have a realistic success of the chance at success elk on the other hand there are a ton of really good um over-the-counter options so the for archery, you have either you can do antlerless, so cows, or you can do um, either sex or bulls. So there's a couple different options there depending on what you put in for for over the counter. Um, and over the counter, all the over the counter tags go on sale in August. I believe it's August second, which is the same day the leftover tags go for sale. Which we'll get into what that means in a little bit. Um, but if you're going to buy an over the counter tag, wait till August fourth or so to go into the computer to do it because August 2nd, the computer dies for CPW because every single person in the world is trying to get a leftover tag. And so their computer system totally dies. And like last year I was like logged in, it opens at eight. No one lets you like log in before like seven. I was in at seven Oh one is when it like went through on my computer and I was number 9,007 in line. Holy Holy cow. cow. Literally like, and I was like, I pushed the button at seven and went through at seven Oh one. And of course the, you know, I was just kind of in there cause there was one tag I might've wanted if it stayed and it didn't. So I was, you know, it was probably gone in the first 50 or hundred people. You can go to a store and like wait and have somebody at the store help you. Um, which if we're going to do that, make sure that the place you go to is going to be open when the draw opens. Like I know a lot of Cabela's around here and stuff like that aren't actually open until like an hour later. And so then you're screwed if you're not there um and so it just kind of depends and if you do go somewhere make sure that the person that you're going to deal with knows how to use the license machine um i've had plenty of experiences dealing with trying to get somebody a license and they're like the person doesn't know how to do it their system doesn't work whatever like when a uh, todd came out for our staff hunt for pheasants uh, in 2020 whatever that was like in january that one year uh, me and him i called a gas station that was on the way off the farm and talk to them like yeah we still like and i knew they still licensed i called to make sure they're open 24 7 their thing works 24 7 it's cool like that was called them on like tuesday and then friday we drive out or thursday night we drive out there and their computer hadn't been hooked up in two years <laughs> oh my you know, god they, they, they yeah. told me literally two days before yeah we sell them all the time no problem we get out there and the computer's never been not like not even plugged in but he goes i i don't know and it's like the there's a special like printer thing they have to have yeah. It has like the old school, like half shell, like receipt printer thing. Cause it prints these really weird, worthless things. 
and then of course it doesn't they don't have they don't even have that so you know it's been like forever and of course like there you have a huge sign that's highway next to highway we sell hunting licenses and fishing licenses like, nope you don't so he had <laughs> not to with that money. machine <laughs> you're, yeah. you're so supposed to, to but you don't yeah 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 so he uh he had to go to town the early the next morning and go to the grocery store when they opened to get one we missed the first deal of the day it wasn't a huge deal but you know things like that definitely try to get that taken care of one other note on the uh, over-the-counter things they mail those to you if you buy them online and they take about three weeks to mail anything it's really really slow so if your tag is less than three weeks away there's a way to tell it that you want to go pick it up in person obviously if you live here it's no big deal to drive over to walmart and just tell them you, you buy it and then go pick it up um whereas if you don't live here and you may still want to do that and just when you get here go right to a walmart or something get it right away and get it taken care of i know this last fall like last year i had a i ended up drawing finding a second tag on the leftover list um for deer and i had four weeks till the season started so i was like i got plenty of time when i hit this button for it to get here in the mail but in the back of my mind i was like i should probably just go pick it up I ended up waiting for the mail and it came no problem, but I was a little bit stressing when it got there like Monday and the season started on Friday and Saturday. So I was a little stressed in there for a little bit, but um, it's possible. But definitely keep that in mind. If it's less than three weeks, you'll probably just want to go pick it up or at least tell them that, tell them that and go do it. Yeah. Um, so I'll, like I said, for archery, there's both um, antlered and, and either sex and antlerless or I mean, and bull. Those that season September second to September thirtieth. There's a ton of units in it that are in all of those. Um, again, a lot. Of, one thing to think about is where is this? Are there actually elk there? Um, it's like you'll see. This is one the probably can't really tell the antler, the antlered map. Everything on this side is east of I-25. There aren't a whole lot of elk out there. Um, and there's really not a whole lot of public land out there either. So there are a few places where you'll find them. And when you find them, there's a ton of them on some dude's cornfield. And so if you get lucky enough to know that dude and he wants you to shoot the elk, you're in a good spot. But if you don't know that dude and you, you're not going to have a chance, uh, realistically out of use. So keep that in mind. Definitely don't buy. They also have a late, uh, an ar- rifle season that's open for like, September 1st through the end of the year every year for the Eastern elk. Same thing. If you don't know somebody who has elk on their place, you're wasting your money. Uh, especially as a know. non-resident because it, you know, you're going to spend 700 bucks and you're going to look around and be like, Oh, there's not a single place I can get to that. It's elk out here. So good. Like there's an elk tag from where my farm is. There hasn't been an elk near my farm in my whole lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> literally we have not seen an elk in the unit in my lifetime and there's an elk tag you can buy out there it is so one thing i should cover here is a b and c tags so an a tag is a tag that um is they call it's based thing of it as a primary tag so you can only have one a tag no matter how, how you get it whatever if you dry it you buy it over the counter you buy it late so anything that's bull or either sex almost any almost every bull tag or every bull tag and almost any either sex tag is going to be an a tag the uh the season's choice white tail deer tags i was talking about earlier those are like one of the rare exceptions where the either sex is actually a b tag but so if you get an a tag that's your one option so for example if you wanted to do an archery elk hunt you can buy the a tag over the counter so you've got a bull or either sex tag depending on what you unit you're in then like especially as a resident you may not want to use a non-resident because it's expensive but you could buy the over-the-counter antlerless so cow tag and it's a b tag so you could have both te- L, a cow and a bull tag obviously that's really helpful when you're out hunting as a resident it's like 107 dollars to do that 110 dollars. no big deal you know whatever yeah. for you guys it is. Let me pull my numbers because it's going to make me laugh. Oh, yeah. How much it's money you're going to spend on this. Ridiculous. Sorry, I got to pull it up. I have it all in that lovely article we're going to release to help with this. 
Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, while Tim's looking for that for just a second, um, I, like I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, this is for our viewers and for our listeners. Um, you know, a lot of information that we're that we're putting out here today in this podcast, but Tim did put. Uh, a lot of this, and and I, I haven't even had the chance to look through all. What was it, seventeen pages? I think something like that. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't even had a chance to look through all of it and and get all the information myself. But a lot of this info, and maybe even a little more, Tim has put into a series of articles that will be released on our website, fallobsession dot com, as well. So, podcast, podcast video here this upcoming week, fallobsession dot com. All that's going to have these resources for you guys to go back and, and pull from kind of as you need. So anyway, go ahead, Tim. Yeah. So basically in the article, just to talk about it for a second, I put every single type of tag you could get for every single animal for like the main four. So uh, deer, bear, uh, elk, antelope. And then I cover how the moose mount, uh, mountain goat and bighorn sheep draws work because they're kind of a different thing. Um, and they're a lot, they're sort of more complicated and they're a lot more expensive to get into. We'll cover that when we get to those because they're, they're more fun to talk about because it's like a once in a lifetime thing, but also you're like every year I got to pay money to just draw a preference point. This sucks. Mm -hmm. Anyways. So for, like I said, for, for resident, it's $57 and 90 cents per elk tag. So like I said, it's about $110, not quite to have two elk tags whatever that's cheap for you guys the bull or either sex tag is 790 seven hundred dollars and 98 cents and the cow tag would be 526 dollars and 17 cents so you're at 1230 bucks not quite um and so uh you know you you better bring home an elk for that and, and you know so no kidding yeah not to mention everything else that goes to cost that but so like for like for me Whenever I've had a chance to have both tags, I've always had both tags because you only have one. It always works out where you only see that one. Like when I was a kid, my dad would always just buy me the bull tag just because – and kids' tags are so much cheaper. So if you have a child that's uh, 12 to 17 that wants to hunt in Colorado, even as a non-resident, like the tags are all around $100. Um, and then bear tags are substantially less than that. Um, so definitely if you have a kid that wants to hunt here or you want to hunt here and bring your kid, it's way cheaper to bring your kid and have them buy both tags and you just buy one. Um, so keep that in mind that if you do have like a 15 year old, it's probably wise to have them buy two of them cause they can buy two of them for less than you can buy one. So good, way, good work around there. You think, uh, your, your boy's ready to hunt yet, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a few years. <laughs> say that, that here they do have a, a minimum age of 12 for big game so when you guys when your kiddos yeah. get closer guys we'll we'll figure something out i was yeah, gonna about, say i'm gonna start training with my with my four-year-old we got, yeah, we we got, got about start nine work. years left yeah we gotta start working on stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah i can say i'm i'm my daughter's turning th just turn or turning three in two days so i i'm right where you guys are at too so yeah, yeah. my son just turned three two days ago so right yeah. here right here so anyway so yeah so definitely something to consider or like if you you know if you're going with a group of guys and no one person you know maybe multiple people don't care about cow versus bull it might make sense especially if you're just doing all over the counters to split up like who does who has what um so that you can you know cover if you have a cow or a bull so also on that point rifle for rifle seasons for sec for elk for second rifle and third rifle there's an over-the-counter bull tag uh, not all the units but some of the units that that's good for and like especially one that i hunt and i'll cover in a little detail in a second um you can get a cow tag and then like draw it really easily or with no points or whatever and then buy the bull tag so what i've always done it's like for elk i usually hunt in unit three slash 301 so that cow tag you can all like even as a non-resident, it's like a hundred percent draw. If you put it as your first choice, if you put it as your second choice, it's like a 95% draw, which means that you'll earn a preference point and draw the tag. And so like, well, I've always done that and I've drawn it twice or three times that way recently where I've been able to earn a preference point and draw a tag. And then I have the option to buy the bull tag. So I had both tags and got a preference point and it cost me like, an extra, you know, tight cost of one license for just getting one or the other. So 
it's a great way to do it if you are in a unit with a lot of animals that has uh, either limited public land or just has a lot of animals and has a lot of tags but they're migrating like unit 93 and 301 are they're huge migration units whereas if it snows the elk are moving and if it's not you're kind of screwed unless you have to be on one of the random few spots where they're actually resident elk um and like i mean there'll be the elk migration starts in like september and goes all the way through i was up there in january this last year with that special tag i had and they were still migrating the same way at that point and when we saw some of the days we saw thousands of elk in january whereas you know they're there's a ton of elk up there. It's just a matter of getting to the right thing. Um, on that note, most of the uh, over-the-counter rifle tags for or over-the-counter elk archer, excuse me, over-the-counter bull tags have a point restriction. So what I mean by that is they used to have the elk have to have four antlers and a brown tie on one side. So you have to shoot a bigger bull, which is cool because you're shooting a bigger bull, but they're not very common. Um, in my 2020 season, I saw one legal bull the entire time. And that was it. I only saw two other bulls and we saw like 35 cows, but we only saw one legal bull. So if you are going to sell out and just get an over the counter, like bull tag, just realize that, you know, you're looking at a small percentage of animals. There may be a thousand elk and there may be three in that whole herd that are legal. It's usually not quite that bad, but in a herd, a smaller herd, like of 30 to 50, there's probably one or two legal bulls. Mm-hmm. So, and you know, you, you, so you said four, four plus a brow tie, four plus a brow tie. Okay. Yeah. So the brow tie, you have to have brow ties on both sides and then four on one side. Gotcha. So, and the main beam obviously doesn't really count until you get to the very back point. So you have to have see three other additions besides the back one. Okay. It's pretty easy to tell because the elk antlers are big. But definitely if you are questioning it all, don't shoot it because it's a huge fine and probably five years minimum loss of hunting privileges for 48 states if you screw up. Wow. Um, so, you know, it's not worth it. If it's questionable, don't shoot it. And then the, uh, on the cow side of things, if there's like even a tiny little antler, it's not a cow. So you'll get somewhere like the antler will be like as tall as their ears and you'll like not see it. Usually if you call CPW and let them know, they like don't kill you on it, but they, but it is an issue. So definitely really make sure that, Hey, this really is a antlerless animal. There is no antler on this animal. Um, you'll see some spikes where they'll break it off at like, you know, three inches above their head or five inches above their head. Um, and you won't notice it till you know, something happens. So definitely really take a good look at their head. If you can't tell, don't shoot. Take your time on that. Um, do you guys have any questions on elk? Cause obviously, you know, I've kind of covered a bit. I figured if you have questions, somebody else has questions. Man, I don't have anything coming to mind. I mean, honestly, not just for listeners, for me too. Like, like we've already mentioned a couple of times, a lot of information. I know for me to fully get the grasp of it, I'm, I'm actually planning on going back and listening to this podcast again after we publish it to to make sure that my notes are are right and, and add some that I might have missed. But um, I, I don't have any questions right now. Um, unless you got anything to add, we can we can move on to what you got Ooh. next. So Yeah, well, I'll just go back to deer for one second. Um, so deer either a buck or a doe tag or either sex tag are all the same price. Um, and those are $420 and 23 cent non-resident or 42 and a penny for residents. Um, and then I said for non-resident kids, it's 107 and 43 cents. Uh, one thing to note on all of the, um, non-resident tags, they do include a fishing license. So, um, you you might as well fish while you're somewhere cause you paid for it. So keep that in mind. You do get a fishing license with it. Um, and one thing, other thing to note, if you want to just put in for just a preference point for any of the animals, the, uh, the preference points code is, you remember how I was talking about what all the things need? It's P nine, 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 nine P. And I wrote, and it's not in the article. I put it with every single animal. So it's pretty easy to tell that that's a preference points code. But what that'll do, if you put that in, like I was talking about earlier, for the elk, if you put that in as your first choice 
because you can list four choices for tags you want. So you put that in as your first choice. It'll guarantee you a preference point. And then you list that cow tag that I keep drawing, which I'll hotspot. I don't really care because there's so many up there. It's never going to make a difference. Uh, EF00302R. So you put that as your second choice. You're likely, even not guaranteed, but likely to draw that cow tag as well as get that preference point. So not only are you pretty likely to get a cow tag this year, you're guaranteeing yourself a better chance at something better next year. Um, for most animals, three points is about this place where you start getting into a better tag. Um, so basically three years of not drawing or doing this system where you draw something that's you know not quite as good or you draw something that's going to be there anyways. So it's, it's wise to, even if you're not planning on going this year, to start putting in your upfront costs is for a non-resident to put in for one animal is $106.26 to cover that just in detail for if they buy a small game. By the turkey tag, it's $180.43. Each additional animal to build points is $9.17, except for moose, mountain goat, and bighorn sheep. Those have an additional charge of $100 per preference point for a non-resident or $50 for a resident. So that adds a bunch of money if you start putting in for those. But let's say this year you just put in for deer. For $9.17, you can get an elk point. For $9.17, you get an antelope point. For $9.17, you get a bear point. In my opinion, bear points are kind of a waste because they're not. There's a lot of good zero point bear units, and they're the to get into like a really really good bear unit, you're in like the mid 20s. Um, so like for me, building bear points is no big deal because it's it's like seven dollars and thirteen cents a year to do so, you know. But if you're gonna not hunt in Colorado every single year, if you don't put in for three years, you lose your points. So it's kind of like if you're gonna do this every year, it might make sense to build bear points. If not, you're probably just as good just to kind of hunt the bears that are there um because to get a really really good tag is like i said mid 20s so you're you know but big difference there anyways so we'll go to antelope next which i know is probably sam's favorite and one he wants to talk about the most <laughs> so i'm about those antelope, speed goats man they just yeah, tickle my gizzard same, same price as here um so again 40 420 and 23 cents for uh, an adult 107 and 43 for a kid, um, 10, 42 and a penny for a resident or 16, 32 for a resident kid. So my daughter's going to get down a lot more near kids because, you know, 10% as much. So. Well, yeah, you live in Colorado. I'd expect that. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, though, when I came down and hunted with you guys for the staff hunt in 19, the amount that I paid for that license was like 330 if I remember right mm -hmm. and I got seven deer tags you know two the two mule deer and the five whitetail yeah it would cost me more money to buy seven deer tags in Colorado than it would like it would take multiple years to do it of course but it would cost more money to buy those seven deer tags than it did there plus the four turkey tags yeah that I got and so I filled yeah. three of those and I filled three of those turkey tags yeah we're we're doing a podcast today over all this stuff Colorado I'll tell you in like 10 seconds that $330 gets you five whitetail tags, two mule deer tags, and four turkey tags in the state of Texas. Non resident. Boom, that's it. We've just covered Texas. <laughs> yeah, Texas is. Uh... <laughs> yeah. And it's like $7 if you want to use a boat. It was super cheap. Yeah, exactly. Yep. It was, it was amazing. I was like, what? And it came in the mail, and I was like, you just punch this thing out, and you're good to go. And it's way more complicated here, but that's the way it works. Yeah. Anyway, so pronghorn. Um, there are a lot of options. One of them is over the counter. It's archery. Um, it's kind of odd where the first part of the season, so season's August 15th to September 20th from August 15th to, to the 31st of August, it's buck only. And then it switches to either sex after that hmm. for the rest of it. It's good in a lot of areas that actually have a lot of pronghorn, but they're and then, so the pronghorn map, I'll pull it up probably can't really see it so it's basically eastern colorado and then spots in the mountains so the spots in the mountains are mostly places where there's very few if any pronghorn so you want to keep that if you are looking at hey i want to go to unit 23 which is on here 
you better know somebody who's got some ground in 23 or at least have scouted it extensively to know where some pronghorn live in 23 because there's not many pronghorn in 23 um for example whereas like my unit 93 is in here it's a there's not many pronghorn there either and they're all like right near the highway the few that there are um and the land access is pretty poor like it's like basically three guys own most of the stuff where they live and so if you know those three guys and they like you you get a chance and if not you're you're wasting your time so Hmm. but there are a lot of areas around near lyman which is a town um southwest southwest colorado where there are quite a bit of pronghorn this unit all these are in there and there's actually like here and there a semi big area of public land here and there um but again it's there's a lot of private and they definitely hang on the private more than they hang on the public so if you are going to do the over the counter archery pronghorn it's a big time scout job you want to get out here expect to spend most of the season out here like i said it's a month and a half season for a reason it's a little over a month season for a reason because it it's hard yeah and and it's bow only so that makes it a little harder yet um, i know the, all the pronghorns taken near me taken but usually by one of my neighbor he buys he gets all the tags every year it seems like because there's only there's 10 tags and he draws one almost every year so that's a pretty high percentage he's got a bunch of landowner tags so he can basically space them out where he draws it every year hmm. pretty much continuously but uh you know his shortest shot on one up, up by us was like 230 so you're not gonna do that with a bow and then i mean you're shooting across open open landscape with nothing so that's a little different down in like you know, like i said near lyman and some of those other areas down there where they have more more pronghorn and a slightly better um land access but you definitely want to know what you're getting yourself into with those right it's a great option to get out and do something but uh definitely keep that in mind as for um like rifle tags for a pronghorn a lot of the good ones take a lot a lot of points um i'm gonna pull this thing just to give an idea like like i said there's by me there's 10 pronghorn tags by my farm there's very few pronghorns out there but i want to say it's like seven preference points to possibly draw one of those tags it looks like okay so it's three preference points last year which i guess it was a lot less than it has been in the past um on the landowner side, it takes way more, so that's what I'm usually used to thinking about because we don't really put in for our own out there because I really want to hunt up near, like, where I hunt elk. I want to go up there for antelope because there is an insane antelope population up there. But even just the archery tag up there is four points. The uh, The rifle tag up there is uh, at least nine points. Nine gets you a shot. The, this, this guide I'm using, which is the thing that CPW puts out every year, uh, makes it really easy. It tells you the bare minimum that somebody drew it with. It doesn't go into the percentages, so it's basically the dummies version of like, hey, how many points do I need to even think about this as an option? Yeah. Which I really like because it's like I know that things are not – it tells you right away, is this an option or is this not an option? Whereas if you get into the, like the – if it says it is, then you go figure out how much does it really actually take and go from there. So – I said it's minimum nine. That means one person drew with nine. When you go look at it, there's people drawing it with 15 points. Oh, wow. So it's like the happen of have enough tags for a guy with nine points to get it. So it means there's still people going to be putting in with more t- points than that next year to get it. So, yeah. Hey, Tim, I it's know. It's not a. Sorry. I know you showed us that book on the video. Can, just for the guys who might only be listening to the podcast, can you tell us what it's called? Yeah. So it's. Colorado Outdoors, Live Life Outside. Um, it's their annual preference point issue. Um, it is $3. It is the best $3 you will ever spend to get from them. Um, it's Colorado Outdoors Magazine is the name of it. And I will give you the phone number to call if you want to get it. It's 1-800-417-8986. And it's awesome. Perfect. They also send you other stuff if you pay the money and get the subscription every year. Um, I think I just have it added on when I do my license just to pay it one then and then it just happens. So it's pretty cheap. I want to say it's like 13 bucks a year or something. It gives you a little break on the sticker price, but this one up, this one thing is worth it in yeah. my opinion, because it just makes it so easy. And 
like I said, it gets to the bare minimum before you go spend hours digging through all the charts. Um, cause CPW puts out charts for everything. And, you know, like the deer chart is, um, how many pages is this bad boy? Besides too many. It is a thousand and forty nine pages. Oh my gosh. And that's just deer. And I think elk's the longest one. Let's pull it up just so I can I think elk is the longest one. You overwhelmed yet, Nick? Yeah, I was overwhelmed like thirty minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, I guess deer's the biggest one. So it's like I guess it's a thousand and forty nine pages of crap. And one thing to know about that, control F is your best friend. Yes, that's Use what I was going to suggest. <laughs> if, if you don't control F, you will lose your brain. Um, so just like, and what it does is basically you control F the like first five parts of the code. It's like you'll do like um, control F um, DM003, and it'll pull up all the, the deer bucks in 003, and I can find it really easily. It'll, it has like three or four options then. Um, for, let's see, how many zeros or three bucks are there? There are two pages with zeros or 12 options for DM003 between muzzleloader, archery, rifle, all there. So it's super easy to find them. Then you just go through. There are some ranching for wildlife ones. So if you see one that's um, got a W in the code, so it's like DM003W, if you're non resident, that sucks. You can't do anything. As a resident, <laughs> um, they're a special program that cpw offers where somebody uh rancher wise is willing to trade a bunch of doe tags and an occasional buck or two tag um to people and usually take a lot of points like this one i randomly pulled up takes six preference points but somebody used as many as 18 to get it last year um so think about that somebody waited 18 years to get this tag oh my gosh but uh anyway so like you uh you get a chance to hunt their private ranch for a period and usually it's doe tags. So basically they trade 90% of the doe tags. They'd be issued as a landowner to state CPW to get a few more buck tags. Um, and then CPW keeps 10% of the buck tags and you get to hunt it for a season and stuff. That's what I did for my elk hunt um, back in January for the cows it is a pretty awesome experience, but also pretty crazy. You should definitely go check that. Um, podcast out if you haven't because that one was got some good story for us so yeah uh, pronghorn uh, back to that because i totally sidetracked myself too much and that'll happen so if it happens again sorry guys but You're good. that's the way this works there's a lot of crap going on oh yeah um no doubt so uh pronghorn um as for like i said most of the most of the good rifle tags take a lot of points and even the good archer tags take quite a few points so if it is something you want to do you should start building points as soon as possible and probably want to have at least five before you get really serious about trying to draw any particular tag. Um, there are some other options. If you have less points or if you have money, you can always buy a land on a tag. Um, Lantern tags, which every species has this option except for moose, mountain goat, and bighorn sheep. But basically 10% of all tags west of I-25 and 15% of tags of all tags east of I-25 are given to landowners that apply for them. So they have to have a certain amount of land. The minimum is 160 acres in a particular unit. Um, and you apply for them and you can get um, tags. Basically, there's two types of landowner tags. There's one that's good for anybody. It's called unrestricted. If I, as a landowner, if you get it, you can sell it to anybody, give it to anybody, whatever. It's good for that animal. If you buy it, you have to buy it directly from the landowner that's named. They have to sign it. They give it to you. It's a voucher thing. You take that to a place where you buy a license and you pay money for the actual tag. So even if you bought that tag, let's say you buy this landowner antelope voucher for 1000 bucks. That's pretty cheap, but let's say it's a doe voucher. They sell 500 to to 1000 bucks for a doe voucher. So you buy, you buy this doe voucher for 500 bucks. Well, now you're going to go pay your additional fees to the state for that tag. So, again, if you're non-resident, there's no cost differential. So you're going to pay an additional $420.23 for that tag to the state on top of what you already paid that landowner for that tag. Obviously, if it's a once-in-a-lifetime buck, that's a different story. You know, if you're going to get a, a 093 
pronghorn buck tag, and that tag that's two thousand dollars from them and four hundred twenty from the state. Well, that tag takes, like I said, nine points to draw. That's pretty cheap in the grand scheme of things to pay two thousand dollars to save yourself ten years of waiting. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. So there's some caveats to that, um, where some tags go for way more. One place to find those, and I mention it in every single one of these articles, is Hunting Fool. Um, it's a really awesome resource for landowner tags. None of them are up yet because, of course, they haven't been drawn. They don't go out until the same time the first draw goes out in June. So about June 10th, you should start checking Hunting Fool to see what is for sale in Colorado. Right now, to give you an idea, there are three tags up there, all in Nevada, for one, two for mule deer and one for elk. Um, if you have $17,000 or more laying around, go check them out. If not, skip them. Oh, yeah, let me go grab it real quick. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, I'll grab my checkbook. Yeah, I know you didn't have. Over, you should work that overtime today, Sam. You'd have been okay. Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> that and seventeen so, more. Yeah. So, anyway, so just a heads up. If you there is there, they do. They can be really expensive. Um, there's not really a super awesome like way to know if it's a good price or not. I always the what, what what I've been told and what I kind of live by and if I ever sell ours what I'll live by is five hundred dollars per preference point used to, to needed to get it time plus a um, dollar for every acre you get access to. So the other thing about it is you get access to whoever is selling it every acre they have in the unit that's good for. It. So like if my dad so like when he gives me the landowner voucher I well we get occasionally for deer. I get access guaranteed. I mean, I get it anyways because I'm a kid, but you know how it works. But I get guaranteed access to our property. It'd be about 1,600 acres. Plus, I get the tag that, as an, a resident, takes three to five points to draw for our deer tags. So it'd be 15, so 1,500 plus the thing. We're looking at three grand minimum for that tag to sell it. For my dad to be interested in selling it, we're probably talking 10,000. But, um, just a heads up anyways so pronghorn like i said that's a that's a good option there there are a lot of pronghorn um tags that are given out to landowners with really low um like years to draw them it might not really where we are but like up in the mountains and some of those other areas where there are a bunch they draw them quicker than like that you oh, like unit three where i was talking about where it takes nine points for me to draw it or nine points for you guys to even think about drawing it. Like a landowner draws it at like three points or two points. So they're going to get them more often. So they're going to be willing to sell them. I mean, it's still going to be expensive, but they'll sell them semi more affordable than like the 93 landowner, the one that takes 12 points. That one's going to be expensive. Right. So it definitely, if you're thinking about that, do a little research into what it took for that landowner to get it. And then you'll have an idea of why, well, is this really like a wise choice for me to, to spend five grand here for this one you know if you have the money and you got nothing else to do it's no big deal but for the three of us i think that's a that's a conversation that our wives are not going to be too happy about hey you're dropping five thousand dollars to go hunt what where yeah uh, <laughs> that's so, not very true yeah, no. so just a heads up on that um but yeah those are the main things for pronghorn is definitely keep in mind landowner tags because there are a bunch that float around especially if you're willing to just do a doe pretty expensive for you guys but as a, if you were a car resident you know it'd be fun to just get out and do it and I've, every year i see them up on hunt and i always think about well can i talk my wife into 500 bucks to go do that and it hasn't happened yet but one of these years is going to happen yeah so bear tags like i kind of mentioned that a lot of the bear options are um best to just kind of pick which what you get um there are really great options if you have a ton of points and if you don't have a ton of points there's a lot of good options too um one thing with bear tags is if you have a archery elk or archery muzzle or archery elk or deer tag or a muzzle or deer or elk, or elk tag there's probably what's called an add-on tag for bear where you're at um so like in a let me pull up a code so I can make it make sense for somebody who's going to actually use this. Um, so let's say you drew a archery elk tag in unit four. It's a common, really common area to get an elk tag. 
if you get if you do that, you can buy a bear tag that's a really high percentage bear tag really easily. You just buy it. No, you don't have to put it in for draw or anything. You just add it. It's called an add-on license. Same thing if you had a muzzle or a tag in unit four or um, for elk or deer. So you can just add it on really easily. So those are a great option if you're already going. Bear tags, they made a lot more affordable than they used to be. Um, for a non-resident, it's only $103.60. So, you know, what's it's a lot. If you were debating between, am I gonna, should I buy a second um, archery elk tag? Like to have the cow bull, or should I buy a bear tag? Obviously, it allows you to justify one hundred and three dollars versus the four hundred twenty dollars for the cow. Um, or you know, if you went cow route, you spent the four twenty on the cow, you buy the bear tag, you're still spending less than buying the seven hundred dollar bull tag. Mm-hmm. Um, so your wife's going to be happy about that one. So keep that in mind that there is a bunch of options for tags on on bears, and it is a lot more affordable. Um, one thing to note, there are no auction or raffle tags. I probably should have covered these with everything else, but what a auction or raffle tag is, is every animal, deer, elk, uh, antelope, there are two auction tags and two raffle tags. So in an article I cover in detail, who has it and who sells it and how it works and all that. But basically how it works is a conservation organization gets them and they put up like the the raffle tags they sell raffle tickets online you buy those raffle tickets if you get it it's a statewide tag good for anything one bull or one bull or one buck whatever the species is good anywhere good for all the seasons super awesome super open tag and i said like there's two of those for raffle and there's two for auction if you have a bunch of money laying around and you really want to go hunting buy the auction tag Usually they're between fifty and one hundred fifty thousand dollars for deer, elk, a pronghorn, a lot of money. Now they have the same thing That's crazy. for mountain goat, moose, and bighorn sheep, but there's only one of each, and the auction one is like a minimum one hundred fifty thousand. Hmm. They've gone as high as four hundred thousand. Oh my gosh! Um, one of the guys I follow on Instagram won the auction, the uh, raffle tag last year for mountain goat. And shot this beautiful, beautiful Billy. Um, and so that it was kind of cool to see, like, somebody I knew had it. And then another guy that uh, works at a store called One Shot Gear got one of the other ones the year before. I forget which one, but he got one of the Mountain Goat. I forget if he bought the auction or won the raffle for the Mountain Goat tag, but he had it the year before. So it's like two years back to back, and somebody I kind of know had had the Mountain Goat, one of the two Mountain Goat tags. So that was oh, pretty wow. cool to see. That is cool. Um, is that what's obviously. known as the uh, governor's tag? Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Cool. Yeah. It's not called that in Cardo, but yeah, it's the same thing. It's the same governor's thing. tag in Wyoming and everything else. But That's where it is, um, Wyoming. Okay. Wyoming has it. Montana <clears throat> has it. Arizona has it. It's called like the super draw. And they're a great option. I mean, if, especially if like you win the lottery, shoot, put put that money in. Cardo requires that seven i think it's it's either 75 or 85 percent of the money has to go to strictly to conservation like so the org puts it all back to cpw um it's like the one i'm probably the most familiar with is the um, bighorn tag which bighorn sheep society gets and so they get the money and they give it all back to cpw with this thing that says this has to be used for bighorn conservation you know like here's a check for four hundred fifty thousand dollars. it's pretty so sweet it's a, so they give up two tags because they get the raffle on the auction. They make about 450000 500000 between the two, write them a check, and it's like, boom, we have, you know, way more tags long-term than we're going to have selling those for 3000 a piece or whatever, wow. 2000 a piece. Yeah, and that so. also uh, helps justify it to those dudes who can spend $400,000 on a tag because it's, it's going towards conservation, you know, it's no big deal. Must be yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, one story I heard was the guy who bought the uh, – Montana Bighorn one like back I think it's back to back years even um, owns Jimmy John's and I want to say he's paid over seven hundred thousand dollars between the two, um, you know. Yeah, it's crazy, but it's like I can't think of a better use of that guy's money. That's some true. Freaky fast cash right there. That's right. <laughs> Sounds like we need to open some Jimmy John's, but yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's get into let's get into the moose, mountain goat, and sheep ones because those are. Like I said, they're a little more complicated in some ways, but they, uh, they're they pretty cool. So we'll start with moose. So the way it works is you have to have 
three points, um, and then you can start getting what are called weighted points. So you have to buy three points to get work, your first preference points. And then each year after that, you get a weighted point. So when you look at the chart, it'll say like three plus two or like three and two or three and five or three and seven. So you've got three up front and you have however many additional years you put in as the second one. And like I said, when you, when you put in for it and most people are just buying preference points because there's not really an option to draw with less than about three and five for any of them. Um, you are paying $50 as a resident to add to your points or you're paying a hundred dollars as a non-resident this year i made the decision that i'm going to start my mountain goat climb i've decided like i'm in a spot where i can afford it finally just pay the 50 bucks a year and if i draw it at 27 years which is about realistic i'll be 57 so i won't be 60 yet um, and I hopefully we'll be in good enough shape i can go hunt a mountain goat if it takes me 35 years i'll be 65 and i still hopefully will be in good enough shape i can do it um, so somewhere in the 27 to 35 year range is what I'm looking at getting this tag. And so between now and then I'll pay $50 a year plus the $7 and change for application fee. So I'm going to pay, we'll just say 58 by the time it's all said and done, $58 a year for the next 25 to 30 years to get this tag. Wow. Wow. But wow. Well, well, best know, of luck to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in no I'm in my I'm in no hurry to get it because I obviously want to get it when I have you know my kids are a little older and either they're gone or they're old enough where if I go for like the season for it's like 15 days or if I'm gone for 15 days my wife's not gonna kill me because uh, you draw that tag you you gotta commit and do it like it's a yeah you know it's a once in a not one not necessarily once in a lifetime you could draw it again if you started early enough you know if you put in started putting in points at 12 which is something that a lot of people do is they put in for points for their kids yeah um and it used to not cost the extra money so it was no big deal like i really wish like it didn't cost money till about five years ago i really wish my dad had done that for me when i was little you know i would have uh i'd be 17 or 18 points in at this point Dang if it, my dad, dad had thought about I thought about it and I had like fought for it when I was 12 <laughs> um, to either towards, you know, I, I realistically, I could draw all three if I were the point. Cause it takes about 25 to 30 to draw any of them. If I were 18, 18 each, I'd be in a lot better spot. Anyway. So the moose tags or any of these, the, the moose, the non goat or the bighorn sheep, the tag, when you finally draw it as of right now for residents, $319 and 58 cents. Obviously, that's going to go up a bunch between when I get there, so I'm playing on 400 bucks. At that point, you're invested. You know, I'll be in two thousand dollars, or if I'm in 30 years, I'll be in uh, 1,500 bucks. What's another 400 bucks at that point? Right. Mm -hmm. If you're not, if you're a non-resident, it's two thousand four hundred and forty-three dollars and ten cents. So it's pretty expensive still. But again, you're you're in a hundred bucks a year at you know say twenty seven years you're in twenty seven hundred dollars, so basically you just doubled your cost overall at that point to get it. Um, so if that's really something you want, the raffle tag obviously for those is definitely the way to do it. The raffle odds are better than the normal draw odds, and you can win the raffle with zero points. So you know you might get really lucky and win the raffle. And it doesn't eat up your once in a lifetime. So certain tags, certain of those tags are once in a lifetime. It doesn't eat that up. So if you win the raffle or win the auction, even if you do it multiple times, it doesn't eat up your once in a lifetime. You know, they may get, you know, if you win the raffle three times, they may investigate how did you do this or what happened? Because that's obviously going to look shady. But um, if you win the auction tag three times, they're just going to say thanks for the money. Um, so yeah, definitely, true. definitely something to look at and, um, I know, like the, like I said, the Bighorn one, that's a really great organization that does theirs. Um, they do a huge conference thing where they do the, do the actual auction and it's super cool. I got to go one time and it's awesome. And I got to see the moose tag get raffled off once. So I was at the SCI banquet for that. And I want to say it was like 207,000 is what it finally went for. And, you know, it's just cool. Wow. It's a cool experience when, if you know when it's going to happen to get there and do it, um, so Ducks Unlimited gets one of the other big ones and they have a huge mega banquet that's downtown and costs a ton of money here. And my dad got to go to that once and like somebody spent like a hundred and there are multiple items that sold for over a hundred thousand dollars at this thing. And so it's just kind of like, 
you know, it's cool to go. And if, if you know, you're just going to go and hang out and have a good time and eat some food and have some drinks and yeah. maybe buy a raffle ticket and something that you, you know, the, the prizes are going to be stuff that you're not going to normally buy. So it, it right. might be stuff that like, and you may spend 50 bucks for a raffle ticket, but it may be something that's life changing. So yeah, yeah definitely, absolutely. definitely something to look at. And those, those conservation banquets are always a blast too. So yeah, um, definitely keep that in mind if that's what you want to do. For I sure. think that's pretty much the main points on this stuff. What questions do you guys have? Man, kind of same as before. I I can't say I have any off the top of my head. Just yeah. it, it's so it's so much. It's so dense in just the information. And I'm right now for me, like I mentioned, I'm gonna have to go back and listen to this episode again to get the full grasp on kind of pick apart the pieces that I that are specifically interesting or applicable to me and what i'm what i'm interested in and then i encourage our obviously our viewers and our listeners to do the same and especially with those articles that we got that'll be rolling out this week um that you put together um definitely be hitting those up and the specific areas that are relevant to to you guys so yeah yeah and then listeners out there if you have a question just shoot it into pop session and they'll get it over to me and i can try to answer it and if i can't i can at least tell you who can um yeah. cpw does have a really good resource called hunt planner um you call them during the week i forget there it's like nine to five type hours nine to four type hours um you talk to a real person who they're not going to tell you like elk are here elk are not there but they're going to say like this is what to expect in that area um there's how many people are up there that's kind of stuff like that um they're really helpful i know a lot of people have used them and they realize like hey you're coming up for like a once in a long time trip you want to have a good experience. You want to bring your family. We'll find you somewhere that kind of works for all that. So definitely yeah. keep that in mind too. Awesome. Well, Tim, I, I really appreciate all the, all the research and work that you did to kind of prepare for this episode, those articles that are rolling out again. I, I know you've, you've spent some time putting in, get all that together. So really appreciate that. And you taking the time today to sit down with us and, and talk with us about it. So yeah absolutely sam it's good to be here for sure um if you are a listener at this point if you've made it this far it's probably because you're planning a colorado trip um th this is not n one of our normal hunting story podcasts and stuff uh, like i said we did that something similar to this last year with tim trying to do it every year i think talking about some of these specifics and at least give you guys a resource that y'all can use to to go back and hopefully better plan your hunt so if you're still with us thanks for listening if you're watching the video thanks for watching if you haven't already um, head on over to our social media pages on facebook instagram twitter hit that subscribe follow like button whatever it is go subscribe to our youtube channel we got multiple new videos coming out every single week right now um, including new episodes of our both our texas dirt series and our my obsession series that we're working through right now um, social medias and then fallobsession.com that's our website that's the hub that's where you can go to find all of our content including educational articles like what we've referenced uh, that tim's doing for us and we got stuff covering all sorts of different topics in the hunting and outdoor world so head on over there explore videos articles recipes um, our gear and apparel be sure you check some of that out and we actually do have some new spring designs that are about to be available for pre-order too so keep an eye out for those um, whatever podcast app you're listening on, or if you're listening on the YouTube channel, be sure that you follow, subscribe, leave us a review, all that good stuff. Um, and that helps us boost us in those numbers and get our podcasts out to more people, um, to listen and everything like that. Finally, Ridge Rock Hunt Company, they are the partnering sponsor. They drive our podcast. Derek and Lacey over at Mississippi do a fine job helping others book their hunts. So Tim's helped with a lot of stuff as far as kind of the do-it-yourself standpoint and some info on that. If you are looking to book a whitetail hunt or really a lot of different species hunt, um, they don't just do whitetail, they do everything in North America. It doesn't have to be Colorado. Ridge Rock Hunt Company is your answer. Go check them out. We got a, a link to their website in the description on this video or podcast, whatever, whatever you're listening on. So, gentlemen, appreciate you guys. Tim, Nick, thank you all. Sounds good. I got one last thing to add. Just it remember, is. deadline is April yes. 5th at 8 p.m. Don't be late. April 5th. <laughs> Write it down. Put it on your phone. 
turn that's on at the no- top of my the top of my page long notes yeah <laughs> april 5th is the day turn on yeah. a reminder so all right guys we're gonna hang it up appreciate y'all listening to another fall obsession podcast episode we'll be back again next week and we'll catch you then we'll see you later